Welcome to Stroke Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here for this week's dose of debauchery. The variety hour. Sorry, I'm trying to puff away at this and keep it lit. Because you said, hey, let's just smoke cigars this whole time. Let's just, why do we just do it in variety hour? Let's make it a staple. All right, make it a staple. Make it a staple. So, housekeeping. housekeeping, because you are the man who enjoys housekeeping. <laughs> Ooh. People who have done our tags, and if you have done our tags and we do not mention you, be sure to poke us, because it's very possible that we miss things from time to time. A weird thing to point out, uh, for some reason, just recently, people are doing our tags that we haven't met or interacted with. Right, that's because other people tagged them. Other people have tagged them. So we're not getting everyone. We're finding them slowly. Right, right. But if somebody's watching this and we haven't seen, just let us know. We Absolutely. really want to watch it. We just haven't found you yet. Yeah, we, we wrote those questions because we're interested in your answers. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Steve Donahue did the Da Vinci Short Story 101 tag. Amy, and, and masterfully so, by the way. Um, Steve always puts us to shame. Can, can we just, can we for a moment just revel in Donahue? Hello, BookTube. Hello, BookTube. Now, here's the thing about old Steve. Every time Steve does a tag, there's something in there where Steve's like, but wait, let me tell you what's wrong with this. And yeah. I fucking love every second of it. Because I'm sitting there like, oh, Steve, you dog. You son of a bitch. You dog. Uh, so well done, Steve. Loved it. Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf did the tag as well. And Amy, there's a reason we didn't tag you. It's because you do a much better job than we do. So, in the future, maybe just, I don't know if there's a way to exclude us from seeing <laughs> your takes on our tags, but they put us to shame. Amy is very passionate about Canadian literature. And every time, she always, she's even brought it up to us. She's like, how about some Canadian literature? She is Captain Canada. And I don't know a damn thing about Canadian literature, and I'm ashamed of it. So please, Amy, uh, if you see this video, shoot us some what to read, some Canadian stories, uh, give us some suggestions. She's given us suggestions uh, in the past. That Tim Hortons guy, I know he does a lot of good work. <laughs> Uh, hello, insulting all of Canada. Uh, so please let us know, and we'd love to really explore some Canadian literature, because we owe that to you. About 16% of our audience is Canadians, Dalton. Thank you for getting them to unsubscribe. Tim Hortons. Um, Books and Beer did our uh, short story 101 tag. And um, Books, he had been absent. He'd been conspicuously absent. Uh for a long time, almost, you'll enjoy this reference, like Sting, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And it took us, the NWO, to bring him out of, <laughs> to bring him out of the rafters to come down and beat our ass with a baseball bat. You just made my terrible, dark, trashy secret public to the world of the internet. Tell them, my, a little bit more. Okay, so, professional wrestling. You used to watch it when you were a kid. Don't tell me you didn't. And you loved it. Uh, and then you became an adult. And there was a time in your life you were drinking. You were like, God, I used to watch this all the time. Is I it wonder, still on Monday nights? Is it still on Monday nights? And then you enter my level of drank too much. And you're like, they've got a network? I'll pay for that. No one did that, by the way. Just Dalton. And then it becomes a weird tradition with your group of friends that every pay-per-view you get together, drink too much, and enjoy the wrestling. No one does that. Just the Dalton. The wrestlings. Uh, no, this is the Midwest, sir. A lot of people do that. Uh, so the Sting reference was beautiful. Mm. Uh, but he did come out of retirement almost just to do that tag. And that was did beautiful he? and much appreciated. Excuse me. Appreciative. <laughs> That's why I got water. Rachel Louise Atkins did the Badass Poetry 101 tag. And her first favorite poem was Dulce et Decorum Est. We might already be married. Uh, but then she followed that out up with saying that the greatest poem ever was... The love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Never mind. <laughs> you're back. You're back on Dalton level in my book. Uh, so, no, no, no. People do these videos, and when we do a tag, I sit down and I labor over what I'm going to say. What poem is this? What poem is that? And then I watch somebody else's video. I'm like, Jesus, I'm ignorant. 
I'm like, I just went on like all Bukowski and this person's just throwing things around. I'm like, I should have read that by now. <laughs> so bravo to you. Well done. Cody from Pimp Book Review did the badass poetry 101 and he used sunglasses, guns, energy drinks or beer. I'm not sure what that was. Free weights, an American flag and belches. This is a man who we have not given enough attention to. Right. I like him way more than I should. I'm enjoying his channel more and more, and the level of badassery that he brought was wonderful. Madman Reads did the Poetry 101 tag. Yes. In terrifying fashion. Yes. We just found this one recently, and this was one of the ones who we have not had any contact with this gentleman. We haven't spoke to him very often. Just out of the blue, we found the tag. We're like, oh my God. Very and much enjoyed his take. So yeah, now we have a new booktuber to follow. This is great. Well done, sir. Thank you. Uh, one other small thing. Um, this is largely um, discouraged, I think. When you, we watched, before we started our channel, we watched a lot of videos on what to do, what not to do, yes. how to make one, how to do this, how to do that. We wanted to be um, literate in YouTube yes. a bit before, before we jumped into the water. And do your research. One thing people always say is, you might have goals. You should have goals. Don't share those with your audience, right? Yes. Don't put them out there, it's not their responsibility. But we think that it's also important to celebrate with your audience and, and with the people who, who comment and who like these videos and uh, our subscribers. We set out at the beginning of this month and we said, okay, we want, because we believe that these goals are reflective of the job that we're doing. Yes. Right. You don't set a goal. gratification Right, you don't set a goal for a subscriber number simply for egomaniacal reasons. Well, some people do, I'm sure. Um, but you don't always. And we feel that these things are very much a reflection of the work that we do, of the effort that we put in. So we set the goal to have 650 subscribers. By the end of May. By the end of May. We shattered it. We rocketed past 700 in the month. Damn near 100 over what we expected to hit. Right. Uh, so thank you to each and every person who took the time to push that button. Uh, it's super humbling. It really is. To, you come in here and you just uh, do all this work. You're doing the reading. You're busting your ass. And you're having a great time doing it. But it is still work. It is still work. But just to, see, just to wake up and see and be like, hey, people are really appreciating this. This is awesome. You know, there, there are times where I'm reading Harry Potter, for example. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, this is so great. This is so great that I would like to just sit and envelop, being be enveloped by the literature, by the greatness that is J.K. Rowling's piece. But I realize that uh, we dropped those videos and people are expecting me to destroy it, so I have to. I it's, had a it's, very it's heartfelt my, moment with the internet here my... and you just ruined it. <laughs> no, I love destroying that, by the it's way. It's so greatly appreciative. Uh, we do this because we sincerely enjoy it. This is what keeps us sane in the real world. Uh, and just to know that other people are enjoying it as well, uh, that means the world to us. We read your comments, we read your tweets, we've made a lot of great relationships with a lot of booktubers via this, and uh, this is awesome. So thank you very much. Our literature has grown because yes. of, of interacting with everyone. For the first time in my life, I actually read what I'm supposed to read. That's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my. If we, can, if we can be very honest, I don't think that there is any point to making this a secret. Our goal is obviously to be full-time YouTubers. I, I think it's I think everyone's that's the, goal. That's the end game. It has to be. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you don't you don't put all the effort into this. And and look, that might not be if you are a content creator. That might not be your immediate goal. But can you look me in the eyes and say, you know what? I wouldn't want to do that full-time. I wouldn't want to have a career making videos online. It's taking your. I wouldn't. I wouldn't <clears throat> want to do what I love for a living. It's taking your passion and being able to do that daily. Uh, we're very passionate about this. We're passionate about literature. It's what we love. And the opportunity to do that uh, full time, to sustain your life, it, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. And that's the dream. That's like, the I'm dream. just putting it that is. out it's there the because that's the end game, right? It is. We're talking about it goals. Is. That's the ultimate goal. It is. Uh, so, variety hour oh, topics. We got that housekeeping out of the way. What would you like to talk about this week? You had some topics, didn't you? I would like to talk about that goddamn gorilla. And that's how I'm referring to it. Go now, on. I don't know the good super details of the name of the animal, what they, where it was. Uh, it's a viral thing right now. You've heard of it. If you haven't, 
it's on the YouTubes. Essentially, at a zoo, a child somehow entered the gorilla area. The mother didn't notice, uh, and this is all caught on film now. Uh, a lot of panic. I think it's a three-year-old child. The gorilla approaches the child. Uh, he's literally hovering over it. The zookeepers, for lack of better words, shot and killed the gorilla. Yeah. A yeah, lot of people are outraged. No. You gotta do that. You've got to shoot the gorilla. Absolutely you do. Um, it, I, I can see where outrage comes from. Um, here's what you do, is you shoot the gorilla, and in short order you shoot the mother. Right? <laughs> or, or the father, whoever's there. You, you have to take uh, that step. It because was, that is the person who put the child in danger. It was poor parenting. It was. Uh, however, people are upset about the loss of the life of this gorilla. I understand that's upsetting. But that was what must be done to protect that child's life. Now, a lot of people said the gorilla wasn't aggressive. That's great. But the moment the gorilla becomes aggressive, there is no more child to worry about. Wait, the moment the gorilla becomes aggressive is the moment the child is gone. Yes. They are instantaneous things. <laughs> Very recently, however, uh, the zoo managers have come out and said, uh, yeah, we did what we thought was necessary. We would have done it again if we have to. Uh, so bravo to you for basically and literally sticking to your guns. Uh, because I think you made the right decision. That had to have been done to protect the life of that child. No one's saying it's a great thing. It's not a great thing. It's a terrible thing. And especially, think of the zookeepers. People don't work there because they hate animals. These people love animals. They're passionate. That's why they work here. That is painful to them. Yeah, this not, it's not a retail job. This, right? this is not shooting a wild animal that you've never had interaction with. This is taking out a friend to protect someone innocent who can't defend himself. Right. Despite the fact that the gorilla was innocent as well. Yes. Gorillas is innocent in that, in that situation. Yes. But the gorilla is still a gorilla. Yeah. So I think it was a necessary choice. And this whole thing has gone just so viral and been so blown up. And I, I'm going to be the one to say, I, no, I think that was correct. They did what they had to do. You've read Frankenstein, right? Yes, I have. What's, what's the scene in there with the child? Frankenstein and the child? Uh, is that just the movies? I think it's just the movie. Are you sure? Now, I think Frankenstein, dra the monster, yeah. does drown a child, but in the movie version, the child is throwing flowers into the lake or whatever, uh, and the monster doesn't have the association to understand the flowers, so he throws the child because he thinks that's what he's supposed to do, and the child obviously drowns. That's what we have here. Literary reference. A wonderful literary reference. Uh, so yeah, the gorilla, even if it was not aggressive... It is still monstrous. It is it still is monstrous. Still monstrous. So, uh, you put yourself in that situation. If you fell into the gorilla encampment, would you want the gorilla to... Oh, don't shoot it. He's right. friendly. Yeah. Have fun. We'll get you out in a minute. Yeah. So, that, that's my take on that. That's my viral video of the week that I'd like to address. Yeah. Uh, anything from Adrian's world of the internet? Adrian's world... Adrian doesn't have the internet. Adrian doesn't have the internet. It's my birthday. And yeah. And you, you didn't say anything. You didn't get me a hat or some confetti or anything. I don't care. Okay. Uh, How old well, are you now? 20? I am 21? 26. 26. I am uh, closer to 30 than I ever have been, which I define as old. <clears throat> 30 <clears throat> is when you really hit stride as an individual and you become, you start becoming beautiful. Um, if you say so. Uh, so I am an old man, and here I am filming and working for you <laughs> instead of celebrating. So you two welcome. Legs, two legs better. Two <laughs> you monster. <laughs> uh, so, what do you got? You gotta have something. Give I've got something nothing. Kind of, you've got nothing this week. I've got nothing. You've got nothing this week. You had topics. Uh, there's more we can I talk about. I had housekeeping. I'm always very polite. I say, what would you like to talk about, Adrian? If you don't say anything, I ramble. He does this He does this in the variety hours to get back at me for when I do it during the reviews. No, that's what you do. You set me up in every review that we have. Because you say, Dalton, this, this, and this. Why is that? And I'm like, what do you want me to say? Well, I'm not something. thinking the process of you. And I, if I say something off the wall, you're like, no. Let me tell you what it is. If I say it right, you go, that's cute. Now let me tell it the right way. So there's no win. Okay, that's it's accurate. A loss. It's a loss. That's accurate. Uh, let's talk about some more YouTube-related things. Uh, okay. You're familiar with the H3H3 lawsuit that's going out. I am familiar, but not as well-versed as I imagine you to be. Uh, I... I'm not going to say I'm an expert by any means, but uh, just the gist of it. Uh, essentially, H3H3 is being sued by a fellow YouTuber, and it is over copyright infringement. And the concern that is being raised is something that we have experienced. 
the average person who is maybe not on the internet frequently, who is not familiar with the world of YouTube. Are you saying I'm sub-average? Yes. Uh, the person who's going to be a juror for this does not understand how copyright infringement and what is fair use, how that works. And I well, there's a lot of argument about fair use in general. There really is. The there really is. Um, I think it's a bit silly because, I, from what I understand, this person is suing them because they didn't agree to A, either pay him a chunk of cash, or B, feature him and promote him. So now he's going to sue them. Those of you not familiar with H3H3, basically what he, he does a lot of kind of what Thunderfoot does as well. Yes. Where you take something and you sort of explain it and you call the bullshit yes. that's being put on display. Now, I, again, I don't know a ton about it. I'm just vaguely familiar. Uh, so I do highly suggest that you go to H3H3 and watch their video about this and make your own decisions. But let's look at what we do on the world of book two. Right. We take the published works of other authors and we do read from occasions little quiz snippets and quotes, but we break them down and we talk about them. That's fair use because we're contributing to the world of literature. And we are taking a part, not the whole. Exactly. But that is a hard concept to define, yep. especially when we first started talking about poetry and what we could and couldn't read, because reading the entirety of the poem may be considered copyright infringement, but it may not. Reading the entirety of the poem on the show. On the show. So. It is a confusing topic, and for someone who has no experience whatsoever, who's going to be a juror on this trial, that's terrifying. It sounds a lot like copyright infringement. It does. It does. So that's a huge thing right now, uh, and it's very disappointing, and H3H3 is in a different community than we are in the BookTube community. Uh, I'm sure there's crossover, but th there are communities in BookTube. Right. Uh, it's very disappointing to think that another member of his community will, is suing him. Is he really? In, he, he's in a different community than us, but he does a lot of the same things, right? Very similar. He very takes similar. a completed work and breaks it down. He is a critic. Yeah. He is a critic of of the YouTube genre. I think so. And so I think that that's very interesting to get into as well. And at what point? I think it's important to ask yourself the question of. Where where does that where does copyright infringement come into play, and at what point is it just fair use? Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line, and why is that where you draw the line? Why, not just where do you draw the line, why is it where you draw the line? And see, in my personal opinion with the whole copyright thing, I can understand both sides of the argument. Uh, as a published author, author, you wouldn't want your work just out there for free. This is your living. This is how you sustain yourself. But... As a published author, don't you want someone to promote your work? There is no publicity that's bad publicity. Don't you want people to be interested? So, I mean, look at it when we do uh, Shakespeare. We can read the entirety of Shakespeare. That is perfectly allowed because that is far beyond copyright. But if we wanted to do a George Saunders piece, we could not read the entirety of it. If we wanted to do a Bukowski poem, we could not read the entirety of it. But you can read some of it, and you can include some of it, as long as you are contributing. I think, I think the, big, the big question to ask here, as far as why do you draw the line there, is what do you have to be ashamed of? What is there in that piece that you don't want people knowing? And that's the thing. Would this have been the case if the critical review was positive? Or is this just this was a negative thing and now I'm upset about well, it. Well, I think the answer to that is, I think that's answered in the grounds upon which he is being sued because they would not feature him because they would not give him a chunk of money, right? That's promotion. Yes. That is not criticism. So, it's a very interesting topic. Harold Bloom did not make his career as a critic by simply saying, oh, you know, this is good stuff, in the Dalton voice. Okay, what he did was he broke things down critiqued them, said these, these are the positives, these are the negatives, this is what you can take from this piece, this is what I took from this piece, this is how this can be dissected. Okay. Uh, again, I highly, highly encourage you to go over and check out the channels uh, and make your own opinion, formulate it, uh, because that's what you should do. 
Uh, and I, I really just wanted to comment a little bit on it because it is very relevant and pertinent in the world of booktube right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think it needed to be at least mentioned. It needs to be explored. Because this could go one of two ways. This could be good for the world of YouTube. This could be very bad for the world of YouTube. It could be extremely bad for the world of <clears throat> so YouTube. So it's something you should be paying attention to. This is something that the <clears throat> movie review community has struggled with since yes. inception. And it, Not the, the movie, but the inception of the U YouTube movie critic community. It's unfortunate, uh, but BookTube is a smaller community. Uh, it is not ascended to the ranks of movie reviews and things like that yet. It is a community largely comprised of people who do not make their livings on YouTube. Correct. Who could be smashed who do this for by passion. something like this. Right. So uh, think of it, if you are a content creator, uh, how you would react to a possible lawsuit. Uh, you're not someone who is sustaining themselves through YouTube. You're someone who's just doing this as your passion. So what would happen basically is you can take the hit and somehow figure out how you're going to pay for this or you're done. Yeah. You don't get to do what you enjoy anymore, which is worse. Yeah. Which is much worse. I'd like to issue a small call to action since I never have anything to talk about. If you would like to leave in the comments below things you would like to hear us talk about, I would greatly appreciate that so that I can come with guns and I don't have to look stupid when Dalton asks me what would you like to talk about and I have no outside experience other than that, which I have talked about in book reviews on the channel. That's what I'm here for. Uh, we've got a lot coming up in the month of June. June's a great month for us. Uh, we're already head first into the Hot Sticky Summer Novel Writing Challenge. Uh, we are launching the Dirty Word Society, uh, which has been our secret project that we've been working on. We think people are really, really going to enjoy that. We don't. Uh, we, we, we hope you enjoy it we because hope. we're going to be doing it anyway. Yeah, we're going to do it anyway because we enjoy it and that's what matters to us. We're pricks. Yes, but we really hope. I, I think people are going to like it. I do. I really do. I think there's something there to toy with. And you, we called it the Dirty Word Society. Come on. Better. Come yeah. on. Come on. My, you like dirty words? Oh, Captain, my captain. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you like this kind of shenanigans, if you like these kind of antics, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give us some likes. Here's, here's a big thing I want to talk about. I, I uh, did plan on this. I forgot all about it. I never wrote it down because that's what I have to do to remember things. Likes. We have been guilty of not liking or commenting on things on other booktubers' videos. Um, there was an event recently that really sort of shed light on how much importance there is to liking a person, hitting the, the thumbs up button on someone's video um, when you enjoy their content. And you don't have to like this. You don't have to like any of our videos. Um, but when you like something that a YouTuber produces, be sure to hit that thumbs up because it's every time you do that, it's sort of a pat on the back. It is. Right? Support that community. Support the community. Support. Um, everything that goes into the videos and it, it's just a very simple thing that takes it less is. than a second it doesn't stop the video you can do it while listening while watching um and we've got to get better at that as well we do uh it, it's it's a very simple act but it's sometimes just overlooked uh and that's the thing i would rather leave a good comment and engage conversation that comes to me first before i think about push, pushing the right button. absolutely it's a uh, forgotten that is an feature. important thing it's a forgotten uh, feature so make sure you go out find some good booktubers that you're enjoying give them a couple likes doesn't have to be us we're cool with that uh, but make sure you're promoting that community we're pricks uh, that was very heartfelt of you and the whole time i'm just being a needy bitch and i'm like and make sure you tell me happy birthday because it's my fucking birthday uh so let me end on that i'll make you the good guy this week that's a rarity. Anyway, House of Slytherin. Make sure you get out there and like some BookTubers videos. And make sure you follow us on social media if you like this kind of thing we do. Twitter, Strip Cover. Facebook, Strip Cover Lit. Instagram, Strip Cover Lit. What do we hit there? Oh, my ass is asleep. Oh. Okay. <laughs>